Benton Ultimate Alien Force is the second sequel to Benton Original and Benton Alien Force. It has had many good shows and episodes and today I am going to be counting down the top 10 best Ultimate Alien Force episodes. So without any further ado, let's just get straight into it. So at number 10 we have Catch a Falling Star. This episode is basically Jennifer Nocturne meeting Captain Nemesis in the jail, planning for him to escape. She has developed a condition called Stockholm Syndrome, where she has sympathy for those who abused her. She helps them escape from jail and change their looks in the process. Captain Nemesis plans to attack Ben, which he does, while Ben is investigating his room and ends up breaking his arm and Ben is unconscious. Gwen helps him up and they follow Jennifer and Captain Nemesis where they have a fight and after a long fight, Captain Nemesis willingly turns in himself to the police. This episode is one of the darkest episodes in Benton franchise itself, or should I say, it is the darkest episode in the Benton franchise. This episode is also unique because Kevin is not featured in any of the scenes. So at number 9 we have Nor Iron Bars a Cage. After Kevin absorbs the Omnitrix's powers and becomes power hungry and extremely mad, he goes on a revenge spree to the Null Void. He works in the mine and everyone there is curious as to know who he is. Kevin's former mates realize it's him and they bond up. Meanwhile, Ben and Gwen arrive at the Null Void unexpectedly, only to be locked up. They find a way out and Kevin is already attacking Morg. So he is attacking Morg to take revenge as he killed his partner long before when he came to the Null Void for the first time who helped him with his power madness. Ben and Gwen try to stop him, but he's too powerful. In the end, Kevin thinks Morg is dead as he threw him off the lift, but Ben saved him and Kevin left. Morg is turned to the plumbers as he was doing illegal stuff in the null void, and Ben and Gwen move out. And after Kevin, they go. And let's move on to the next one. So at number eight, we have Perplexahedron. After losing three parts of the map of Infinity from Egregore, Ben, Gwen and Kevin go to Perplexahedron, where they must take the last piece of the map. Perplexahedron is a cube type place filled with booby traps. After getting shot by traps and Gwen accidentally splitting up from them temporarily, Ben realizes the pattern. And then they must find Gwen, which they do. Gwen had encountered Egregore, meanwhile she was away from Ben and Kevin, but Agagor was too busy finding the last map, last piece of the map, that he does not take it seriously. Ben and Gwen, and along with Kevin, meet up again, and they go to the guardian of the place. He hands them the map of the infinity and asks them to go. While returning, Ben, as usual, wants to save the guardian and goes back, so Agagor is present and attacking the guardian. In, in the saving process, Ben loses the piece of the infinity, so Agagor takes it, and the Guardian says, all is lost. Probably this was one of the darkest scenes ever. So at number 7, we have the ultimate sacrifice. Ben loses control to some of his aliens' ultimates as they gain life. I don't know how, but they did. Somehow Ben is trapped into the Omnitrix, where the Ultimates can unbolt, they chill, humongous roar, and echo echo what Ben did, so they can be freed. Ben initially fights them, and Gwen in her astrophysical form joins Ben, and is about to destroy all the Ultimates, but Ben stops her. Meanwhile, Kevin goes to Asma for help, where he is fighting his Galwin guard, and over there, Kevin says, keep my friend. Ben, on the other hand, agrees to die, and jumps off the pit. The music in this scene was amazing, and even though Ben had jumped, he returned back as Omnitrix saw this good act. I mean, this episode was really good because Timmy finally agrees that Ben is his best friend, and the Omnitrix realizing how good Ben is, this episode was really, really good. Guys, let's move on to the next one. So at number 6, we have The Forge of Creation. After losing all of the entire map of infinity, and I was going to be the most powerful being in the universe since Ben, Gwen, and Kevin go to the forge of creation with the help of Paradox, who tells them that there is more than one universe. What? 
Anyways, I know it's confusing. Then they move to a place where the jet gets stuck and Paradox is not with him as he is not allowed to go within several hundred light years of the Celestial Sapien. They fight Agrigor's bones and then realize that Agrigor is already here. Ben accidentally brings his 11 year old self back as he touches the time stream by mistake. And there, the young Ben tries to find the 16 year old Ben and Kevin. After teaming up, they all go to the fold of creation to stop Agricor from absorbing the baby Celestial Sapien after all the attempts they fail, and Kevin has to absorb Ben's Omnitrix, which he does. He defeats Agricor, but is too power hungry and revenge thirsty, so he moves out of the team and becomes a monster. This episode was also really good, guys. So at number 5, we have Hero Time. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin are at a premiere of Jennifer Nocturne where a couple of goons attack her and take her as hostage. We see Nemesis in the background getting ready to fight, but Ben is quick and turns into Spider Monkey to save Jennifer, which he does. Ben says he is the biggest fan of Nemesis when he appears, but Jennifer kisses Ben and says she is his biggest fan. It is later revealed that Nemesis planned the attack to get famous again, but Ben ruined it. He challenges Ben into a competition where Ben eventually wins 2 is to 1. After all his fame getting shattered, he decides to become bad, kidnaps Julie and Jennifer and asks Ben to come and get him. Ben arrives and saves Julie and Kevin and Gwen save Jennifer. He then fights Captain Nemesis. He defeats Captain Nemesis and using water hazard and then sends him off to jail. And he says, it's not about being the hero, it's about saving people. Remember that Captain Nemesis. Remember that. So at number 4 we have where the magic happens. Ben, Gwen and Kevin are in the midst of stopping Agagor when he opens a gate and goes into a place full of mana. Gwen does not know how to open it but steams up with Charmcaster after Charmcaster heard about the place being full of mana. This place is called Ledger Domain where Adwecha is the, is the ruler of this place and is very evil. He forces everyone to be their slaves. Ben, along with his team, must find the way to get the Alpha Room, which is the piece of the infinity. Ben, Gwen and Kevin arrive at a place where they cannot cross as they found a deep trench in between them. Gwen and Charmcaster even hug after they scene after they cross the bridge, which was nearly impossible to cross. They reach the kingdom of Edwecha and they are fighting him and from nowhere Agrigor appears and takes the Alpha Rune, that is the map of the infinity. He took advantage of Ben, Gwen and Kevin fighting them so he did not have to fight and Ben loses again. This episode was really good and a must watch. So at number 3 we have The Ultimate Enemy Part 1 and Part 2. This is the second last and last episode of Ben and Ultimate Alien Force where Dagon comes out of his prison and tries to take control of Earth and the whole universe. All of the people have become his slaves except the Forever Knights and of course Ben and his team. A full fledged war is going on when Ben, Gwen and Kevin appear. The Dagon also takes control of Gwen's mind for a while and due to her help he escapes prison. In the second part of this episode, Ben turns into Ultimate Wayback and fights Dagon. He was slightly successful. But Dagon was too powerful and he had lava raining on Ben and Ben de-transforms from Baybig. We see the debut of Wild Mutt and Ultimate Wild Mutt and he comes back with Ben, Gwen and Kevin. George the Knight dies due to lightning struck by Dagon. Dagon says, fear not the clouds, fear the lightning. And yes, this was really dark guys, this was really dark. And as George died, it's up to Ben, Gwen and Kevin. And Ben says, are you with me? And they say, yes, we are. Always. And this is, this might be the darkest scenes ever, guys. This might be the darkest scenes. And Wilgax appears out of nowhere. He betrays Dagon and with a power sucking machine. He absorbs all of Dagon's power and he becomes the Dagon himself. Ben, Gwen and Kevin retreat to, to an old plumber's base. Ben gets hold of the sword and uses it against Wilgax defeating him 
After that, he gets a new Omnitrix and the Omnivers saga begins. At number 2, we have Ben 10,000 returns. 20 years in the future, Eon is attacking Ben 10,000 in his headquarters. He attacks Eon and his guards with Ultimate Human Gasur, Actiguana, and Heat Blast Fireballs. Back in the present, Ben touches the hands of Armageddon and Eon's soldiers appear. Ben, ben turns into Spider Monkey to fight them, but then they disappear. Soon Paradox and Ben 10,000 appear. Ben 10,000 reveals he is a different future duplicate than that, than that from the one Ben met when he was 10 years old and Paradox explains cross time traveling to the team. Paradox informs them that the Handsome Armageddon is the source of the troubles. Paradox then appears again and tells them that Hands, are, hands of Armageddon must be destroyed. Ben transforms into Waybig and Ben 10,000 uses Clockwork's powers while Gwen protects herself, Kevin and Paradox from the blasts. However, this was a trap. Both of their ultimate trick symbols glow purple and a portal is opened for Eon to emerge. When Waybig tries to stop him, Eon fires a blast, transforming Waybig into a disintegrating statue. Boy man, this was a hard word, disintegrating statue. My bad guys, my bad. Eliminating Waybig from the Omnitrix, Eon destroys both swarm fires and as he is about to destroy Ben, Ben 10,000 protects him with Diamond Head's diamonds. Eon reveals that instead of destroying the Bens he defeats, he absorbs them and turns them into the slaves. Eon takes off his helmet only to reveal that he has Ben 10,000's face and soon reveals his plan to create a new timeline where he is the only Ben Tennyson in existence. Soon enough, Eon is defeated when Jetray destroys the hands of Armageddon, causing all of the timelines Eon altered to be restored to normal. Ben 10,000 even returns way back, back to the Omnitrix and a few more aliens just to piss off Azmuth. So at number 1 we have Absolute Power Part 2. Ultimate Kevin is absorbing Gwen's power. As he is doing so, she begs him to stop. Still angry with her, Kevin says it's her fault and she could have helped him with her magic. She is able to escape from Kevin by using a spell that has all the arcade games to attack him. When Kevin destroys all the arcade games, Gwen teleports out, meets Ben and Darkstar. They land in Los Soledad where Darkstar shows that he has recruited Cooper, who has had a growth spurt, to help him with turning Kevin back to normal by building a machine that will tap into Darkstar's Dominus Librium piece. Kevin arrives at Gwen's house and he bangs through the door where Ben comes and finds Kevin. After a fight, Gwen arrives and Kevin is off chasing her and gets his hands on her and starts absorbing Gwen's powers. Ben arrives and turns into Echo Echo. Kevin seemingly kills all of the Echo Echo clones and starts absorbing Gwen's powers again, but he is hit by a laser blast from Julie and ship. Julie brings Gwen into the ship and they begin flying to Los Soledad. Luckily, Echo Echo was able to survive by having one of the clones stay inside the trunk of his car. Meanwhile, Cooper and Docs are almost done building the machine and Gwen calls Cooper to warn them that Kevin is coming. Cooper thinks of a plan to distract Kevin by taking control of Los Soledad's missile silos, firing the missiles at Kevin but Kevin destroys all of the missiles. Cooper then tries to stop Kevin with his hand and is nearly killed when Ben arrives. Echo Echo transforms into Ultimate Echo Echo which is the coolest transformation by the way and manages to save Cooper. Then he whispers something into his ear and he runs off. Kevin finally says that he has had enough of Ben always besting him and tries to kill him. Ultimate Echo destroys all of it and finally defeats Kevin. One more should do it but Gwen appears. Cooper turns on the machine and Kevin's powers are transferred to the Dominus Librium piece, finally returning Kevin to normal but there is still bad news. As Darkstar absorbed all the power the Dominus Librium piece took and becomes all powerful however Ben knew of Darkstar's plan from the start and presses a button and strips him of all powers stolen. Finally all those powers stolen were returned and all the four aliens returned from oblivion and the season 2 of Benton Ultimate Alien begins.